Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, August 26th. So today we have the moon moving out of Leo energy and moving into Virgo energy, setting us up for our new moon in Virgo that will be taking place very early on in the day, Saturday morning. Download your moon guide if you haven't already. Listen to the Astro Forecast if you haven't already. There's a lot of details, a lot of information, a lot of energy coming at us with this new moon in Virgo. So the moon will be going void, of course, around 2.55 a.m. and locking into Virgo energy at 8.25 p.m. Even if we weren't in a new moon energy, the shift out of the fire energy from Leo to the earth energy of Virgo is usually pretty abrupt, pretty heavy, pretty weighted. Why? Because we're flying high with passion, excitement, desire in this Leo energy. And then boom, we smack down to earth. We come back down to reality. We are very, very weighted in our physical bodies in the present moment taking a good look at our physical environment in our physical realm. Earth energy, tangible earth energy, materialistic earth energy. We are all up in the physical realm. So it does kind of feel like we hit a brick wall. Now keep in mind, the new moon is the dark moon. There's no light in the sky. There is no way that we can see forward because we have to sit in the darkness in the weight of the shadow realm. Why? Because we have to figure out what it is that we're letting go of, what it is that we're leaving behind, what it is we no longer want to experience in order to create the new intentions, the new goals, the new dreams, the new visions that we will be planting the seeds of under this new moon Virgo energy. This is a time to wind down, to rest, to reflect. It's a time to recalibrate. But let me tell you, the energy that we're moving into with some of the aspects under the new moon influence is going to make it very hard to do just that. There are eight different aspects taking place here today, and seven of them involve the moon. So the moon While still in Leo energy, the last aspect that it makes before going void, of course, is a direct opposition with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Aquarian energy. The Leo energy sits across from the Aquarian energy. They are on that axis. They share that particular topic and theme, which is Leo energy, following my heart, my soul, my passion, my desire, truly expressing myself, my uniqueness, my individuality versus the Aquarian energy, which is more about other people's wants, other people's needs, other people's dreams and visions, the responsibility that we feel to make other people happy. And of course, we kind of dumb down our unique individualism in order to fit in with the greater, grander collective. Now, keep in mind, that when Saturn comes into play, things get a little bit serious, things get a little bit somber. The Lord of Karma needs us to have a serious tone in order for us to see where it is that change is needed the most. This is an opposition, which means that there's an inner conflict, a tug of war, so to speak, between doing what we think is right, what's best for us, what we're truly passionate about versus what we've been doing in order to make other people happy, following other people's path and mission and purpose and dreams. This particular opposition is meant to make us feel a little bit uncomfortable so that we can see where it is that new foundations, new structures need to be built in order for us to get away from doing what we think other people want us to do and getting us closer to doing what is right for our heart and soul. The moon then goes void. Things get shaky. Things get moody. Things get a little bit unstable. The moon, while still void, will be making a very interesting interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, about growth and expansion, about abundance and beliefs is retrograde in Aries energy. 
Jupiter tends to magnify, turn the volume all the way up on whatever it is that we're thinking and feeling. And right now, we're kind of at odds within ourselves. We don't know what we want to do. This is going to amplify the want, need, and desire to bust away from the group, bust away from the team to do what is right for us, but also kind of showing us where it is that our belief system doesn't quite feel strong enough in order for us to make that breakaway, to make that transformation, to make that choice, to leave the group in order to kind of dance to the beat of our own drum. The moon makes very intricate interaction with Neptune. So this would suggest that we are going to have a situation in our lives, in our external realm, pop off in order for us to see the very extreme dynamics. Keep in mind, Neptune is retrograde in Pisces energy. Pisces energy sits across from Virgo energy. And this Virgo energy is definitely showing us the shadow realm of the Virgo energy, which is being highly analytical highly judgmental, super critical, especially of oneself. This Virgo energy wants to pick things apart in order for us to put them back together in a better way to provide us with, you know, a little bit more stability and safety in what it is that we're trying to create. This Neptune energy is always overwhelmed, okay, because our intuition is strong, our dreams are strong, we're living in la la land. And this is the dynamic. This is kind of what's popping off in our external realm, which will put us in a situation where it's very hard to stay present in this present moment, dealing with the circumstances, dealing with the details of our lives, because all we want to do is check out and live in this dreamy little version of reality that seems to be a lot more pleasurable than the one that we're currently living. This is going to add a little bit of a dynamic where we don't feel as intuitively strong as we once did, where it's hard for us to kind of grasp that dream because the Virgo energy is so reliant on the intellect, on logical, practical sensibility, if you will, that we don't get to live in la la land very long. Therefore, we're kind of pushed and pulled, especially emotionally on what needs our attention, what needs our focus. The moon goes ahead and bumps into Pluto shortly after the great transformer himself retrograde in Capricorn energy. Pluto energy work very well together, actually, because they both want to do a deep dive in the mental plane, in the psyche, in order to actually examine the inner narrative, the thoughts, the emotions, the memories, what we actually got going on up there. Because, of course, as we've been learning, what we allow to take up space in our mental plane does kind of get manifested and mirrored back to us in our reality. I will say that this particular energy and aspect will kind of bring out the negative narrative, Betty the bully, negative Nancy, all of those mean girl narratives, if you will, because we're a little bit obsessed with doing a dive in the darkness, in the pain, in the trauma, in the suffering. Why? Because we're in the new moon window. We're in the dark phase of the moon. We have to examine the darkness in order to alcohol it into light. Now, as dark, as heavy, as obsessive, as analytical as this particular energy is going to be to do a deep dive in our mental plane, to do a deep dive in our emotions, we do have to kind of understand that that is a necessary step in order to examine where the problems are in order for us to provide a solution. We get a little bit of help here with this negative funk, with this, you know, obsessive thinking, with this inner reflection that we're doing. When Venus, who is in Leo, goes ahead and bumps into Neptune, who again is retrograde in its place of power in Pisces energy. The beautiful thing here is that Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. Neptune is the energy that allows us to receive intuitive insights, to have a greater, grander dream, to use our imagination, to sort through situations and scenarios in order for us to feel what it would feel like in particular situations. This is how we determine our values, our worth, our passions, our desires. Then we take that energy, we bring it down into the 
the physical body. That's what Venus rules over is the physical form. That's where we sort out what is worth our time, who is worth our energy, what it is that actually makes us happy, what we want in relationships, and what our long term goals and plans may be. So this is a little bit of a revitalization, if you will, a reminder, a renewal of our heart space, what we're passionate about, what is actually bringing a spark, bringing a fire, bringing a flame back into our heart chakra. This is a lot of visualization. This is a lot of intuitive insight. This is a lot of dreaming. But again, we have to allow ourselves that dream phase, which is very hard to do in Virgo season, mind you, seeing that Virgo season wants us to stay grounded in the present moment in our physical realms, only dependent on logic and practicality. Well, Neptune in Pisces energy doesn't want any of that, wants to pluck us out of this present moment, doesn't want logic and practicality to dictate what is possible for us in our dreamland. So this particular energy is kind of like reminding us of what it is that we have to be holding very strong in our mental plane, in our visual, in our heart space in order for us to actually plant these seeds of intention under this new moon energy in order for us to start being able to manifest some of the elements of our dream realm. The moon is going to bump into Chiron, though, the wounded healer. And this is likely going to start speaking some fears, some doubts, some insecurities into the lovely dream and vision and plan that we just kind of encapsulated for ourselves. Now, granted, we have Chiron, the wounded healer, providing us with the wisdom, with the resources in order to actually heal some of the aspects that we have to identify within ourselves that are still open wounds. But at this particular juncture, being in the dark phase in the moon, having all these other aspects really kind of trigger and activate the not so nice thoughts and emotions and memories within us. This is likely going to be a little bit of a salt issue. You know, when you take salt and you rub it in said wounds just to kind of feel the burn to feel the pain. Well, this is exactly what we are doing. Now, the good thing here, what we can learn from this is that the analytical mind of being able to dive into our thoughts and our emotions from this Virgo energy will kind of get to the root problem of where these wounds are still alive and well in our mental plane and in our heart space. Again, we have to identify the problem before we can apply a solution. The moon will then interact with Mercury. Here's an interesting little fact, okay? So Mercury rules over this Virgo energy, is the ruler of this new moon. But just stepped out of Virgo energy just yesterday to shift into Libran energy. This is actually the very first aspect that we will have with Mercury now in Libra. If you have not listened to the Astro Forecast for Mercury being in Libra, please go ahead and do so. What we're trying to do is make peace and harmony with our thoughts, with our lives. We want to strive for balance in Libra and energy, but it often happens that we have to live in extremes before we can even find that middle grounding point. So the moon being our heart space, our emotions, our unconscious selves, our memories, our old with Mercury, the mental plane, our head space, our thoughts that we're trying so hard to find a middle ground on are interacting in such a way that would suggest that a situation is going to pop off in our exterior realms to make our heart and head be at war with ourselves. Okay, so our thoughts, we're striving for balance, we want to smooth things over. Mercury being in Libra wants to stay in the shallow and doesn't really want to do a deep dive in the mental plane or in the heart space. And then we're again, in the dark phase of the moon. So everybody's kind of on edge, everybody's kind of feeling anxiety, feeling those shadow elements, something will come up in conversation likely with a personal relationship because Libra and energy rules over relationships. Something will be said. Something will not be received well. Something will trigger and activate an emotional reaction that will not feel good, that will put us even further introverted in our inward journey 
for us to pick apart what it is we want to do with this information, how it is we want to respond, what this actually means for us in the long run. Is it going to feel good? No. Is it supposed to feel good? No. Why is that? Because the dark phase of the moon is meant to illuminate for us the things that we do not feel comfortable with, the things that we do not want, we do not like, we do not want to continue to experience. Why? So that we can use that as a framework to create new intentions for ourselves, a new vision, a new dream, a new path, a new plan moving forward. So this is definitely going to get the heart and the head on a totally different page. We're going to have to sit with our thoughts, sit with our feelings, see how extreme they are opposing one another and really debate how we're going to find compromise, how we're going to find a comfortable meeting point back in the middle. We're going to wrap the day up with the moon making a very harmonious aspect with Jupiter. What this kind of suggests is that from the funk that we just sat in, from situations popping off, from our heart and our head not being in agreement, from something not feeling good, we had to sit and think. And that's what Virgo energy likes to do. Think about the problem. Think about the solution. So something popped off. This is going to lead to a huge amount of understanding, a total shift in our beliefs and our perspective. This is going to push us in the right direction of growth, of improvement, of progress in our emotional field and the plans that we're currently making for ourselves to get ourselves out of where it is that we're currently at and closer to where it is that we desire to be. 